The easiest way for me to tell our third story is to simply read this email that I received this afternoon. Lagos, Nigeria. Attention, the president's CEO, dear sir, confidential business proposal. Having consulted with my colleagues and based on the information gathered from the Nigerian Chambers of Commerce and Industry, I have the privilege to request for your assistance to transfer the sum of 47500000 United States dollars into your accounts. The above sum resulted from an over-invoice contract executed, commissioned, and paid for about 15 15 years ago by a foreign contractor named Dick Cheney, who has since been indicted. Wait, wait, the control room's telling me this is some sort of... No. Famous internet scam? I don't know. It says right here it's confidential. On the other hand, the part about, about the indictment is it's legit. Bloomberg Businessweek reporting that Nigeria will indeed lodge indictments against former Vice President Cheney and officials from five foreign companies in the next three days. The allegations, Halliburton subsidiary KBR, along with other companies, paid $180 million in bribes to Nigerian officials. The bribes were paid over the course of a decade in order to secure a $6 billion natural gas contract. Mr. Cheney was CEO of Halliburton for five of those years, leaving the company to become then former President Bush's running mate. KBR pled guilty last year in the U.S. in relation to the bribery case. The company, along with Halliburton, agreed to pay the U.S. a $579 million settlement. While we will soon see the indictment of Mr. Cheney, a closer examination of the State Department cables obtained by WikiLeaks reveal that the Obama administration fought to keep other Bush administration officials from meeting a similar fate. In March 2009, Spain's national court was considering a request from a human rights group to indict six former Bush officials for creating a legal framework that allegedly permitted torture. They were Attorney General Gonzalez, Cheney Chief of Staff and Legal Advisor David Addington, Pentagon General Counsel William Haynes, Under Secretary of Defense for Policy Douglas Fife, and Bush Office of Legal Counsel officials Jay Bybee and John Yu. Here is Press Secretary Gibbs on April 14th answering a question from our friend David Korn. Would the Obama administration cooperate with information requests from Spanish prosecutors concerning the Bush 6? Do you think this is an appropriate action for another government to take? Well, I, I'm, uh, I don't want to get involved in hypotheticals. Uh, I, we may have some reaction based on what ultimately happens. But what Mr. Gibbs did not divulge was that the Obama White House, working with the GOP, was pressuring the Spanish government to drop the investigation. As Corn reports, the WikiLeaks cables reveal that high-ranking American officials like Senator Judd Gregg and former RNC chairman, former Senator Mel Martinez, were part of the U.S. effort to kill the torture probe. The men, alongside embassy officials, cautioned Spanish leaders that criminal investigations of the Bush 6 would not be understood or accepted in the U.S. and would have an enormous impact on bilateral relationship. The Spanish ultimate dropped the investigation. Is that for bipartisanship? I'm now to turn to George Washington University law professor, constitutional law expert, Jonathan Turley. John, thanks for your time tonight. Hi, Keith. Spain first. Uh, expected this behind-the-scenes strong-arming uh, from the previous administration, I would think. But what, what, if any, are the legal implications here? And is it within the Obama's admini administration purview to try to influence a foreign criminal justice system? Well, of course it's not. In fact, the Obama administration was trying to circumvent the independent judiciary of another country. They were actually told that by Spanish uh, officials that we actually do have an independent court system, but it didn't stop the Obama administration. Uh, and what was really disgraceful is that the Obama administration, of course, is in violation of our own treaties, that President Obama has blocked any investigation or prosecution of war crimes. And now they're trying to force other countries uh, to adopt the same hypocritical position. It's sort of like the coalition of the unwilling uh, to make sure that uh, other allies would not enforce key international values. I, I didn't think that this could get worse, but it really has. I mean, this is as bad as it gets to, to put pressure on another country's courts and say, if you enforce international law, we're going to come down on you diplomatically, and you're going to have troubles as a nation. The, uh, the Nigeria-Cheney story, what is the U.S. obligation here? I mean, is, is extra, extradition? I mean, that just sounds wild to even say it. Or does the Obama <laughs> White House pressure the Nigerian government the same way that, that it did the Spanish government? Or what happens after this? Well, it is a, a rather wild thought, isn't it, of Dick Cheney being tried in Nigerian court. Uh, you have people scratching that one off their bucket lists, I suppose, around the mm -hmm. country. But uh, the, the fact is that we have had an extradition treaty with Nigeria since 1931. 
And under the U.S. Attorney's Manual, uh, these types of red notices uh, are to be enforced. You are to confirm that there's a valid arrest warrant. There's a valid arrest warrant here. And that the country has an extradition treaty with the United States that exists. And so what does this mean? It means that the United States is going to be an awfully difficult position because they're supposed to help locate the subject. Well, this subject has a Secret Service detail uh, with him at all times. So it won't be too hard to find him. You just call up the detail, and wherever they are, he's there. So it's going to be a very awkward position for the United States. They will have to effectively refuse to cooperate with Interpol, refuse to cooperate with Nigeria. Now, for Mr. Cheney, it means that he probably should get to love the United States uh, very deeply in terms of any travel plans. Uh, if he goes outside the United States, he may not find a, another government so willing to turn away uh, an Interpol uh, red notice. Speaking of Interpol, that's an interesting juxtaposition because the Nigerians want to go via uh, Interpol for the arrest warrant for Vice President Cheney at exactly the same time that the conservatives here are demanding uh -huh. that we use Interpol to arrest the founder of WikiLeaks, Julian Assange. Is that anything but an irony? It, it, it's a really crushing irony because it, it's, it's clear that the United States is pressuring uh, for his uh, arrest and it would be rather odd for them to be pushing a red notice on Assange and then ignore one uh, with Mr. Cheney. Uh, under the normal course of things, uh, they would assist Interpol and Nigeria in extraditing this individual. The fact that he's a former vice president is really not supposed to matter. That's why we have that blindfold over justice. You're not supposed to peek. And this is a red notice in a valid case out of Nigeria demanding his arrest. And once again, we discuss, we're discussing unicorns without even knowing it. Jonathan Turley, <laughs> a law professor at George Washington University. Always a pleasure, John. Thank you. Thank you, Keith.